This is an 18th century book that contains summary reports on developments written by leading experts of the French scientific community. What we care about today is the astronomy part, especially the sections written by Charles Messier. There are other astronomers who took part in this book, but we like Charles the best. Let's open the book and discover Messier's thoughts from the 1790s. Hello everyone, today we have a book with three entries from Charles Messier. Two of them interest us today, but one of them is not astronomy related. So we just opened it from the package, but we have not discovered what's inside yet. So um, let's do it together. The French Scientific Institute published their memories from 1795 onwards. We are lucky to have been able to get our hands on a second volume. Our first impression was that the pages are super thin. That's when we realized that this book has been kept in very good shape throughout the years. And we shall do the same. The first page is... Astronomy. There's a very strong smell to it. Yeah, there is. Maybe this is what smell. I just came home and he was like, look what we got. And I was like, what stinks? Maybe it's the look. It, it smells, smells dusty. Very old. And old. So page one is astronomy. So on page 339, there's a first entry by Messier. It's about the solar eclipse of six Messidor year five. I'm not sure what it is. We'll try to look it up online. So, ooh. During Messier's time, the calendar used was not the Gregorian calendar we all know today. It was the French Republican calendar, implemented during the French Revolution. In short, 6 Messidor or 5 translates to June 24th, 1797. What's this smell? 3.39. Stop flipping it so fast. From the Paris Observatory by Charles Messier. The smell is very really strong. Le mauvais temps a régné tout le mois de juin. On a eu des pluies et du vent. La veille de l'éclipse de même. Pluie à différentes reprises pendant la matinée. Après-midi, orage, tonnerre, éclair. Grande pluie et du vent. De la pluie également la matinée, le jour de l'éclipse. Et beaucoup de nuages l'après-midi avec pluie. Ce mauvais temps ôtoie presque toute espérance d'observer l'éclipse. Avant qu'elle commença, les nuages se séparèrent et laissèrent le soleil assez longtemps dans une éclaircie. Il étoie bien terminé. J'observais le commencement de l'éclipse qui me parut à la demi-seconde. L'échancrure étant insensible, ensuite quelques distances des cornes avec une lunette achromatique de trois pieds et demi de foyer, à grande ouverture garnie d'un micromètre à fil, montée sur une machine parallactique et dont l'axe est toi placé dans le plan du méridien. Le fil mobile du micromètre m'avait indiqué le point du limbe du soleil où je devais attendre le contact des deux limbes. La marche de ma pendule m'étoie bien connue par les midis observés à l'instrument des passages et par des hauteurs correspondantes du soleil prises le jour de l'éclipse. Et le lendemain, voici la table de mes observations, dont il faut ôter une seconde 8 dixièmes pour les réduire à l'observatoire. And then next is what? It's really smelly. It has to be in order. Yeah. 429. 429. Ah, yeah. the comet. Comet of your six, oh, your six men. Near the Pleiades. Écrit le 11 Prairial en 6. Je découvris cette comète le 23 germinal, vers les 8 heures du soir, près des Pléiades, sur le parallèle de la plus brillante de ces étoiles. C'est la 21e comète que je découvre depuis 1758 et la 42e que j'observe. Cette comète, petite, ronde et sans apparence de queue, n'a pu se voir à la vue simple tout le temps que je l'ai observé. La durée de son apparition a été de 43 jours pendant lesquels elle a parcouru 102 degrés en ascension droite en suivant l'ordre des signes 
et 45 degrés et demi en déclinaison boréale, s'élevant vers le pôle du monde à la distance de 21 degrés. Les 43 jours qu'elle allait rester visible ont procuré 28 jours d'excellentes observations. Cette comète a passé par la constellation du Taureau et a traversé celle de Persée pour se porter dans la girafe, et de là dans la tête de la grande ours, où elle a cessé de paroître le 5 de ce mois pré-réal. La courbe tracée sur la carte représente le mouvement apparent de la comète parmi les étoiles fixes. Cette comète, qui a été visible à l'instrument pendant 43 jours, n'a procuré jusqu'à présent aucune observation étrangère. The last one gonna see is gonna be 473. This third and final entry for Messier was several pages long, and not that interesting. Do not hesitate to take a look at our blog post on galactic-hunter.com to see more. That's a really cool book. And it's in a really great shape. Yeah, for being like 300 years old, no, 200 years old. However, it is very smelly. The binding is a little rough. Uh, it does feel really nice to touch. I think the leather of it is very interesting. I don't know, I have an affinity for antique looking items. We closed the book and realized that there was dust all over the table. And on our fingers, we'll have to wash our hands each time we want to read this old but very interesting book. There are a total of 674 pages in this book. The other astronomy topics were mostly about solar eclipses, star eclipses, and moon research. This guy, Laplace, was trying to calculate the moon's apogee and movements and it's 56 pages long, full of research. There were also a few pages about Pierre Michon's 10th comet discovery and a few strange scientific sections were in the text as well such as research on a dead baby cow that stayed intact inside of its mother for 15 months, tree illnesses, research on a man's stomach poisoned by opium, and, the best for last, a comparison between human and horse urine. All right, well, that's it for today. Thanks so much for watching, and don't forget to visit our website to see more about the book. So we'll see you in the next episode, probably uh, the Mars episode. And uh, yeah, so cheers guys!